false teachers. What to look for. Seven signs in seven minutes. False teachers are not a new thing. They've been around before Christ. In the Old Testament, propping false idols up instead of God was a constant occurrence. Gideon, Moses, Elijah, Josiah, etc. all had to deal with the people setting up false idols before God. The people that led these movements would have been the false teachers of the day. When Jesus came, the problem did not just go away. Jesus got the angriest when he saw that the church of his day was more focused on money than God. When Jesus saw this, he started flipping the money changing tables over. Peter stated, but false prophets also arose among the people. Just as there will be false prophets among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. 2 Peter 2.1 from the ESV. Paul, Jeremiah, Jude, Micah, Moses, Ezekiel, Timothy, and Isaiah all warn us about false teachers. There are over 100 verses warning us about false teachers. Excluding the book of Philemon, every book in the New Testament warns us about false teachers. Here are the seven signs of a false teacher. Number one, switch the focus. The main thing a false teacher is going to do is switch the focus. That's it. That's all that needs to be done. Instead of focusing on the gospel, the Bible, and the atonement, they'll focus on other things. It does not matter much what the other things are. It could be money. It could be how to be a better you, how to be a leader, finding your purpose, psychological self-help or other various self-improvement ideas. Or the focus could be turned to the pastor or the institution. It doesn't really matter what it's turned into. There are endless idols and false gods that can be propped up. If the focus has been moved away from God and Jesus Christ and onto something else, you're dealing with false teaching. Number two, focus is going to be on pleasing the world, pleasing man, man pleasers. These people are concerned about building followers and creating legacies, not about creating disciples. Sermons are going to be crafted to make people happy, not change lives. Everything potentially offensive will be removed from the sermon in an attempt to make everybody happy. The culture and the doctrines of the world are going to trump the theology of the Bible and the Word of God. Number three, twisting the truth. They're going to lie and manipulate. This is the fabric of the false teacher. It has rotted their core being. There will be bold-faced obvious lies, but interestingly enough, many false teachers will sneak in little lies into their sermons, not to change theology, but apparently in an attempt to get away with it. Since deception will be weaved into the framework, into the foundation of the message, it will be hard to discern truth from untruth. Number four, hide the truth. The truth will always be hidden. It can be hidden behind programs, hidden behind the leader, hidden behind the institution, and most importantly, it will be hidden in the sermons. You might hear a lot of things in a sermon, but you'll never hear the truth, never hear Christ crucified, never hear the gospel. Number five, attack God's true people. A false teacher is going to lash out at anyone who speaks truth. Jesus was continually attacked by the people of the church. The Bible refers to them as Pharisees and Sadducees. The modern day translation would be the elders and deacons in some of the false churches. Paul had his work and ministry constantly attacked. Martin Luther, who translated the Bible for the German people and led the greatest reformation, was attacked by the false teachers of his time. A false teacher is always going to attack God's true people. Number six, tickling the ear. Ear ticklers. These people are going to use their own wisdom, their own direction. You're going to see eloquent speech and fancy logic. They'll make you feel good. They'll impress you. They will excite you. When you leave the sermon, you may feel convinced that they are really religious people. But you won't hear any truth. You won't hear the gospel. You won't be provided any substance. Number seven, take advantage and exploit people. Second Peter 2.3a of the NASB tells us, in their greed they will exploit you with false words. They're doing this for the money, their legacy, or their ego. Always remember, false teachers do not care about you. They hate you. They just pretend to care about you. And some can be very convincing. They care about what you can do for them. 
They care about the money you give, the seats you fill, the programs you run, and the legacy you create for them. But don't get confused. They do not care about you. They're not here for your soul, but their legacy. Matthew 23:15 of the ESV tells us, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte. And when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves.